What's up everybody, my name is Max Feinstein and I'm an anesthesia resident at the Mount Sinai Hospital in New York City. In this video, I'm gonna be showing you how a pediatric anesthesiologist sets up an operating room to prepare for surgery. If you find this video interesting and helpful, I'd really appreciate it if you liked it and subscribe to the channel. Let's dive in. Fundamentally speaking, the basic setup for pediatric anesthesia is the same as for adult anesthesia in the sense that we use the same mnemonic to help us remember all of the different components of the setup. Specifically, that's MS-MADES, which stands for Machine, Suction, Monitor, Airway, IV, Drugs, and S for Special, which is just a designation that we use for any special pieces of equipment that we need for that case. The equipment used in pediatric anesthesia, however, is quite different from that of adult surgery. So there's actually a separate cart full of equipment that we use at our hospital, which is where I'm gonna be getting all of the equipment from today. And as I go through this video, I'll show you a side-by-side -side comparison because the size difference between the adult and pediatric equipment is quite striking. The first component of my machine check is actually going around to the back of the machine, opening up the backup oxygen tank and making sure that there's an adequate amount of oxygen in the event that there's a catastrophic failure of the oxygen supply from the main hospital system. And then I come around to the front of the machine, check to make sure that the volume is adequate, and then make sure I go around back and close the oxygen tank because if it's left open, it could leak. And then if I really needed it, there wouldn't be any oxygen left. Next, I make sure that I have my appropriately sized circuit tubing, which for pediatric cases, there are actually a range of different tubing sizes. And for this case, I'm gonna be using the second smallest tubing that we have available. But there's one that's even smaller that's made for neonates. Next up, I'm going to do a machine check. And I always do this for all my adult cases, but it's especially important for pediatrics cases where you're changing the equipment that you're using because when you do a machine check, it takes into consideration how much volume is in the circuit that you just put on. And so you need to have an accurate assessment of that volume when you're doing any kind of case, and especially a pediatrics case. So I'll go ahead and do a full machine check here. The last part of my machine setup is going and dialing in the patient's age to my ventilator and making sure that I've got the ventilator set to the mode that I'd like when I get the case started, which in this case is going to be pressure control ventilation, which is very commonly used for pediatrics cases. The S in the mnemonic stands for suction, and so in this case I'm picking out one of our smallest suction catheters that we have, and you can see by comparison it's significantly smaller than the suction used for adult cases. The second M in the mnemonic stands for monitors. And in this case, there's quite a bit of changing around that I need to do from my adult setup. I'll start by changing out the EKG cable because instead of using a five lead EKG for an adult, I'm gonna be using a three lead EKG with the infant EKG lead setup. Next up is a pulse oximeter, and we have a lot of different sizes available for pediatrics cases. And the one I'm going to use here is one of the smallest sizes that we have. Next up is a blood pressure cuff, and we actually have even smaller blood pressure cuffs than the one that I'm using for this particular setup, but I think this should be appropriate, if not for the patient's arm, then probably for the patient's leg. I'm also going to have a thermometer ready to go, and in this case, I'm using an esophageal temperature probe, which is going to go down the patient's esophagus. The last component of my monitor setup is making sure that I've got my cable connected to capture in tidal capnography, which refers to getting a sense of how much CO2 the patient is breathing off. The A in the mnemonic stands for airway, and so I'll start by making sure I've got several different endotracheal tubes that I think will work for this patient, but since I'm not exactly sure what the best size is going to be, I wanna make sure I've got a backup option that's a different size. I'm gonna go ahead and put what's called a stylet inside the endotracheal tube. That gives it a little bit of rigidity, so as I'm intubating the patient, I can navigate the tube through the vocal cords, and then once it's where it needs to be, I'll go ahead and remove the stylet. I also wanna make sure to test the cuff on the endotracheal tube to make sure that it doesn't have any punctures and will stay inflated when I need it to. Next, I'm going to have several different intubating blades, and you'll notice that these are both straight blades, which are also called Miller blades, which are used most commonly in pediatrics cases, particularly with very young children. And I wanna make sure that I've got several sizes available, just in case the first time I go to take a look, it's not the right size blade, and I need to get something else. I wanna have it right on hand, next to me, ready to go.
Other components of my airway setup include several oral airways in case I'm having difficulty ventilating the patient with a mask and I need to prop open their airway a little more. And I also want to make sure I've got eye tape available so I can protect their eyes from corneal abrasions. Make sure that I've got tube tape available so that I can tape my tube down and so that won't go anywhere. And additionally, I want to make sure that I've got several different options for masks that I can fit over the patient's nose and mouth. And lastly, I want to make sure that I've got a heat and moisture exchanger, which is a device that helps keep heat inside of the breathing circuit because that can actually be a big source of loss of heat, which is very important for me to keep track of during surgery. As with my adult cases, I want to make sure that I've got working self-inflating resuscitation bags. And for pediatrics, it's important to make sure you have a couple different sizes available depending on what the patient size is. The I in the mnemonic stands for IV. And as you'll see, the 24 gauge IV that we typically use for pediatric cases is significantly smaller than say an 18 gauge IV that's commonly used in adult anesthesia. Perhaps the most important part of setting up for a pediatric anesthesia case is making sure that there's absolutely no air that's inside of the IV tubing. The reason for that is that some kids can have undiagnosed septal wall defects, meaning a hole in their heart that goes from one side to the other, and if an air bubble were to get introduced into that hole and go across to the other side of the heart, it may end up going to the brain and causing a stroke. That's called a paradoxical embolism, and it's incredibly important that we de-air our IVs to avoid paradoxical emboli. The D in the mnemonic stands for drugs, and this is probably the other most important part of the setup here, is making sure that I've got the appropriate emergency drugs available for resuscitation if there's a problem like anaphylaxis or laryngospasm. Specifically, there are two drugs that I always have drawn up, ready to go, on intramuscular syringes just in case I don't have IV access. Those drugs are succinylcholine and atropine. And it's important to make sure that the dose that I have drawn up is the dose that is specific to the patient who I'm taking care of. Because in the event that there's an emergency, there is no time to calculate weight-based dosing and I need to have my drugs available and ready to go within arm's reach. The last part of my drug setup is topping off my volatile gas cartridge. And pediatric patients can go through a lot of volatile gas, so it's important to make sure that this is ready to go. The S in the mnemonic stands for special. And there are two very special things that I do in all pediatric cases. One is going over to my thermostat and turning it up. Operating rooms are typically quite cold, but for pediatrics cases, because the kids can become very cold quickly, it's important to make sure that the entire room is warm. The other part of my setup is making sure that I've got an age-appropriate hat on. I should mention that pediatric anesthesiology is a board-certified subspecialty within anesthesiology, which requires an additional year of fellowship training after completing residency. And I should mention that I myself am very interested in pursuing pediatric anesthesiology, so if you're a program director and you'd like to have me at your program, please send me an email. Well, that wraps up this video. I hope you found it interesting, and if you have any feedback, I'd love to read it in the comments below. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time.